Faith requires consistent loyalty and uprightness. If God has professed anything in our lives, it will come to pass. What God does is what man can never do. If your relationship with God is insufficient, you cannot get sufficient answer. In the Christian world, we do honor and adore God. That's a fact, right? But in both cases, for both Muslims and the Christians, I am not too sure that we are actually we actually honor and adore God genuinely. Some, and that's why the scripture says they praise me with their mouth, but they do not do so with their hearts. I, or better still, some of us do so, but we do not even understand what we do. But one thing is key this moment, and that's what I'm, why I'm going to talk to you about today, is that it is important to recognize that we must honor God. I want you to say to yourself, I must honor God. I must honor God. In all that I do. In all that I do. First, it is important to listen to the words of admonition from Moses, the prophet of the Lord, to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 4. I just want you to read up to verse 5. If you have your Bible, you can underline that. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. Hear, O Israel. Now listen to me, Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God is just one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. And I want you to underline that if you have your Bible with you. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul with all the soul and with all thy might with all thy might that's a good it's a big challenge please say that and this is why this is my very regular answer to people who have confusion about the trinity i have a lot of muslim friends and the only thing they have is oh, no it's not possible that god is father son and uh, holy spirit no you cannot have, go have god in three forms where there is no son i said okay fine fine let me take you to the scripture in deuteronomy moses says to the children of israel thou shalt love the lord thy god with all your heart oh, first of all i said the lord thy god is one the truth is that there's just one path to lead that leads to heaven, but there are so many tribal trees. It's just like a tree. On the tree, you have a lot of branches. But you know, at the end of the day, one, the tree itself goes on, the root goes one way, all the way down. It might have top roots, but only one gets to the point, and that is the key root. So also, the trunk of the tree remains one with that, with all the branches. So also is the issue of religion. There's one God. Believe me, there is no other God but God. Now, I said it's important for us, therefore, that we should honor God. If Moses is charging us to love the Lord our God with all our heart and our souls, and with all our might, what he's telling us is that you must honor that God. If we agree with that statement by Moses, to honor God becomes easy. If you see someone that disrespects you, first of all, it might just be that, first of all, he hates you. If he doesn't hate you, he does not respect you. If he does not respect you, he cannot fear you. He does not have any time for you. Once a man disrespects you, you are not, you are not some of the one in anybody, in any way somebody that he gives any respect to. And you are not in any way anybody that you would love. You cannot disrespect someone and say you love that person. It's not possible. Even if you love the person, and, and you can see this between husband and wife. If a woman loves a man, 
she will give everything. I don't know where this story of people always say, uh, you, you, your wife, all that a man wants is, you must respect him. By merely loving your husband, you will respect him. You will respect his opinion, you will listen to his opinion. By merely loving your wife, you respect her. You will listen to her opinion. Because without love, respect cannot even come in. Now, let us break this down in today's message, which is entitled, The Sin of Insolence. The Sin of Insolence to God. Insolence is detestable. It's a detestable thing before God. Be I born as a jail on do alone. Just as disobedience is it's detestable before God. Insolence is detestable. And the twin brother of insolence is blasphemy. Or this alone, at the artifice alone, what get the man. In fact, he be genuine. They are twins. Uh, in Matthew 12 31, God states through Matthew that Apostle Matthew that the sin of blasphemy is unforgivable. He says, All sins to man can be forgiven. Wherefore I say unto you, mm -hmm. All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Mm -hmm. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Working hand in hand with blasphemy is insolence unto the Lord. And that's why I say they are sim they are, they are, they are family. They are brother and sister. They are twin. Now they have a sibling. Matthew 20, 12, 31. They have a sibling. You know, if you have a brother, sister, you can have other siblings, people that are with you. Their sibling is presumptuous sin, which you see in Psalm 19, verse 13. Now, the sin of insolence is very obvious all over the place in this age. But it's ignored and unnoticed. We just ignore it. Because we seem to have accepted the abnormal as a norm. Um, one of the problems facing the world today is that of insolence. I People are being insolent unto the Lord. Let me take us to the very beginning of sin. The sin that follows closely with the sin in the Garden of Eden. The sin of insolence. Abel and Cain were brothers. And they brought their offering to God. We know that Abel's offering was met with God's favor, right? Why that of Cain was rejected? In verse 7, we learn of God's position. And I want somebody to read that. It's easy. That's why I say it's easy for us to overlook it in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. We know God's opinion on the offering brought by. If thou doest well, mm -hmm. shall thou not be accepted? Yes. If the offering that Cain brought to God was right, would God not have accepted it? Will his offers not have been acceptable? Today, so many people are still bringing offerings like that of Cain unto the Lord. But the things they do, you're coming to God and the kind of money that you are bringing is such that even if you give a beggar, a beggar will look at it twice and say, are you sure this is 100 naira? Those are little things that shows insolence. We need to see our situation of insolence to God today in the light of failure to love and honor God. People are insolent. People are disrespecting God because they don't love God. 
You may want to ask me how and why are we failing to love God and to honor Him? And I, why do that? How do that become insolence? You are likely going to ask me, don't I attend church regularly? I love God, I come to church. You may not, you may not even ask me, am I not a deacon? What do you mean I'm insolent? I am a mother in the church, I am an elder, I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop. As a matter of fact, I'm a senior prophet. I'm the head of the choir. So what do you mean insolent? And I do my job very well. Even at that, with all those titles that we have mentioned, I want to tell you that you may still be insolent. Let us see how and why in the message of Malachi to the erring children of Israel of his time, in Malachi chapter 1 from verse 6. A son honoreth his father. And a servant his master. Uh, that is an assumption, actually. In the age that we are now, you can hardly find children who completely honor their parents. Either because of technology or because the fear of parents has disappeared from so many children's minds. So, but then the standard is that. So it's expected that a son should honor his father. A servant should also honor his master. When you say servant, we're not saying slave because people look at it as slave. Anyone that works with you or for you is serving with you. So that becomes a servant. A man that works with the Lord, that God calls to serve him, is a servant of God. Where is my honor? God is asking today, and let me give you a background to it. What happened was the children of Israel, they have sinned. They have erred before God. And they have not given to the, the Lord the honor that it is house. So it's asking them through prophet Malachi. Go ahead. And if I be a master, mm -hmm. where is my fear? Okay. Says the Lord of hosts unto you. Okay. O priest, that despise my name. Now the priest that despise the name of the Lord. And I'll tell you how they do that, but go ahead, I'll explain that to you. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? They say, asking. Ye offer polluted bread unto my altar. Okay, hold on there, please. This is where we are today. A state of mannerlessness, a lifestyle that does not honor God, and of no morals before man and even God. That's where we are today. I believe you've been greatly blessed through today's message. And I would like to invite you to join us at Christ Arriver International Church, Gethsemane Parish, every Sunday at 9 a.m. for our glorious day service. We are located off Ibadan Oyo Expressway. I would like to see you around and I'll be glad to welcome you. God bless you as you come. Shalom. Oreo, get all our roads and girls.